The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle with your hosts, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Now, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning, I'm Ellen DeHaan. That's a beautiful morning down south of St. Petersburg, 63 degrees and sunny going up to 82. This is yeah. beautiful weather we're yeah, having. I had, to, I had to wear a little cover up to get out of the car this morning. <laughs> it's nice. It's pretty nice. Uh, folks, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder. This is uh, really important now that we have this virus going around. So if you want to get rid of the bad stuff and get the good stuff in, folic and humic acid is right there. also like to remind you to also pick up our Health Signals newsletter. I got it here someplace. Yep. Ketogenic diet helps tame the flu virus. We know this. Uh, if you're fat adapted, you're in pretty good shape. Number here is 877-927-6648. Of course, you can reach us by uh, email at... Uh, Ellen at TFNN.com. And Nico at TFNN.com. And uh, here we are. I wanted <laughs> to start this morning uh, off with a um, thing about working from home. I thought it'd be appropriate. This comes from Bloomberg. Three hours longer, the uh, pandemic work day has a liber uh, bl obliterated. Uh, obliterated the work-life balance. It's uh, six weeks into a nationwide work-from-home experiment with no end in sight. Whatever boundaries remain between work and life have almost entirely disappeared. Are you finding that happening? Yeah, you know, when I started out, working from home was about a year and a half ago. Yeah. And for me, the getting rid of the stress of the drive. Right. The one hour in the traffic mm -hmm. with the crazy people. And, and, and the bottlenecks everywhere. Yeah, yeah and, and delays. And... and and it was completely random and and just just a very very stressful event so i first noticed how relaxing it was to be able to get up and just do my routine in the morning then sit down at the computer at nine o'clock and and get to work yeah and so that sounded great so when we switched over to working from home i'm thinking all right no problem i'm already doing this no well, because of the uh, epidemic yeah the pandemic yeah the, the, the office moved right. to virtual right. work and and, uh, but it turned out it wasn't the same because I found my, first I found myself with a number of clients that were panicking and, and trying right. to get assistance on how to handle this and right. shut down their buildings and renters and contractors and whatever. And then I found myself sitting at the computer at 5.30 at, at 6 o'clock and, and that I was working more hours at the computer than I had been. And I... I don't, I'm not sure how that's working. And maybe it's because there's nothing else to do. Well, that's part of it too. But I noticed that in the beginning, you at five o'clock, uh, we usually eat around four o'clock and then you kind of shut the computer down and mm -hmm. then you really don't go back. You might be doing other right. things. Right. Uh, but another thing too, of course, we should mention in the type of work that you do is working with condos and co-ops and homeowners, you know, homeowners association during this time when everybody's stuck at home they have nothing to do either right that's so, true and they yeah. couldn't go back north so we have all the snowbirds are still here yeah. and uh, the people are still working and still doing things and and uh, people and then plus add the stress of not being able to go anywhere and do anything so people are sitting in their units or their homes and and finding more, it's, it's too much time on your hands syndrome. Yeah. It's, uh, but, but it, and it's particularly difficult if, you're, if you have children at home, then you have the added hours and hours of time yeah. spent because they're online for school mm -hmm. or they're, they're bored or they're, they want mommy's attention or daddy's mm -hmm. attention because you're home. Yeah, it says here that one big problem, there's no escape with nothing to do and nowhere to go. People like they have no legitimate excuse for being unavailable. One J.P. Uh, Morgan employee interrupted his morning shower to join an impromptu meeting after seeing a message from a colleague on his Apple Watch. 
Yeah, sure. and that's another problem. But because the days are kind of blurring together, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, today's Tuesday because I'm on the show, so that's a good <laughs> right. thing. It yeah. helps me with an anchor for for scheduling. But yeah. uh, you know, people are losing track of what day it is, and somehow. And now I've started getting emails from clients on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm expecting answers too. <clears throat> well, they they haven't expected answers, and I'm not. I don't uh, <laughs> want to reward that and, right. create, and encourage it because I need my downtime, mm -hmm. my break. But uh, I keep an eye out just in case something came up that really did need attention. Yeah. But people are finding that they're they're getting up. They're, they're getting on emails at all hours of the day and night. They're feeling pressure also because there's so many layoffs and uh, people are not people are losing their jobs and. Then those who are working from home are feeling pressure to produce. Pr produce, yeah, and, no, no and, doubt. And, and some companies have been a little more aggressive about Big Brother is watching. Well, you know, if they hadn't in the past, this was a perfect opportunity for them to say, okay, let's devise some systems for checking up on the people that we don't see because we usually see them and now we don't. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of devise uh, the checklist and you know, call call people and say, what's going on? What are you doing? Are you, yeah, so this has changed things because things in America have gotten kind of relaxed in, in a lot of the workplaces where you're kind of working on your own and as long as that uh, production level is there, the boss is not gonna interfere with that. Yeah, and a lot of people have been working from home, particularly in, in areas, uh, for example, in IT related areas mm -hmm. in, in areas that work from computers and really don't spend a lot of time interfacing with people. But I think what's going on, at first we were thinking, all right, is working from home going to be something that now many more people will do because oh, they've discovered how, how wonderful. And maybe once the kids are back in school, and, but now we're facing the summer. Yeah. And there may not be as many summer activities. A lot of the activities have been canceled yeah. for the kids. And it's going to continue to be a challenge for families for, for months to come. Well, and also the businesses that don't reopen. Uh, one of the things I was uh, gandering is that uh, I think it was in 60 Minutes they were talking about they expect about 20% of the restaurants that have closed to reopen. 20%. 20%. That's a very low number. And wow. uh, here in Florida, particularly problem, because now we're entering the slow season, and it's, you know, my work is, is kind of like summer now. Right. And it has been. And so, so I haven't had that surge of income. Uh, luckily, I'm okay, but now I have the summer months to go through, and it felt like I've already gone through those summer months financially. Yeah, yeah because, uh, yeah, people... The, the, unfortunately, personal training is not high on people's lists if they need to cut back or if they need to uh, stay home. Well, the home other or, side of us too, I was thinking because I'm doing personal training, I'm doing one-on-one, -on -one, that maybe I'll get the surge because people are more reluctant to go back to the big gyms and say, mm -hmm. well, maybe I should mm -hmm. social, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe for me it'll be, I don't want to be too busy, <laughs> you know, at my stage. <laughs> but, uh, mixed blessing. <laughs> but uh, there are some tips uh, in this article for working from home, and the first one being uh, form of uh, creating an itinerary to have designated workspace. We've talked about that in previous shows. And, uh, you know, all kinds of little tips. So let's talk about a little bit of that when we get back from the break and meantime i like people to remind them to please pick up our two things the primal edge which will help you get your health back together and the health signals of which you keep on track for that so stick around we'll be right back you know what's cool taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge. Formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back. Uh, we're talking uh, about this uh, three hour longer work date that we seem to be in because of this uh, pandemic that we have. And some of the things that uh, we mentioned before was getting your own workspace uh, in the house, uh, uh, setting a schedule for yourself. And yeah, uh, you, you really have to do that. Yeah. And you have to come to an understanding maybe with your boss or with your coworkers about what the work hours are. Mm -hmm. And don't you know, mistake I would make was at 8 o'clock when I'm looking at the paper and finishing my breakfast, I pick up the phone and, and open the email. Mm -hmm. And then right away, everything blurred because you see something that really either ups gets you angry or upset mm -hmm. or worried or you think, oh, gee, I, I need to do this or that. And suddenly you're not on your schedule and you're starting, you're working different hours and you're, and you're extending your hours and you're not getting up from your seat and you really have to establish your work time and, and it's very important where you do your work. Yeah. If, you, if you set up, the article talked about it, if you set up in, in a place where you keep walking by the desk, you're going to be constantly stressed and reminded that you need to be sitting at that, at that computer. Mm -hmm. So if you have an extra room, it's perfect. But if you don't, at least set up your workspace so it's not in the middle of your living space mm -hmm. the best you can. And we kind of have half and half. It's kind of in the middle of the... But we did that for aesthetic reasons so you could look outside and... It's right. Just, yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah, you know, so I'm, there's a balance there too. And what they're saying, there's... Uh, uh, they're saying about three hours more productivity out of the employees, but then the other side of that is, are they going to be burned out sooner? Yeah, and it looks like they are starting to burn out because, between the pressures of being at home all day, with the, especially when you have children in the house, and then the pressure of trying to keep up with everybody and, and some, finding yourself working extra hours, and, and it's... Uh, it's catching up with people and people are starting to say, boy, I really could, I'm looking forward to getting back to the office. Yeah. Um, Definitely a two-edged sword. Yeah. So uh, I think the important thing is to kind of realize this is going on and to kind of set those hours. Uh, I don't think it hurts to go over those hours now and then, but as the original schedule that you set up yourself, it's important that you stick to that and close everything up so you can have time to relax and 
Yeah, and if you don't take that time, if you don't have the downtime in the evening and, and unwind, you know, the longer you work and the closer to your bedtime, the more energy and stress your body has built up sure. and you're not relaxing, getting ready to go to sleep and to do the healing yeah. and, and get the rest that you need. So how do you see this? I mean, for yourself, you see this thing kind of just going on uh, for the three years that you have planned, maybe two and a half years now that you have planned, and then everything kind of uh, goes different. Because you know, you talk about trying to phase out at some point in your career, yeah. you know, and apparently phasing out is not an option <laughs> 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 because I mean, the work is there. And, 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 you know, my biggest switch was to to remind myself to uh, hand out the work, right? To get help, mm -hmm. not to try and do everything myself. Yeah. And and maybe the letter won't be exactly what I would have written, but you know what? It is what it is. As long as the answer is correct from a legal sure. perspective, it's it, style doesn't matter. As you know, I mean, hopefully you don't quote Wikipedia, but. <laughs> <laughs> Many people are. Well, the other thing, too, with me, I, I see my two and a half years left. I've got that lease, which ends in uh -huh. October, two years from uh, two and a half years from now. And then I have the equipment there. Uh, I'm already kind of saying to myself, oh, what am I going to do with this equipment? Uh, do I sell it? Do I get rid of it? Specialized. Uh, and what do I do now? You know, I enjoy my mornings uh, personal training. I enjoy the fact that I can train there myself. And also it's an escape from the house in a sense. So I have a place to go. So now, two and a half years from now, this ends. Uh, what do I do now? No, I don't want to stay at home. So do I extend this? Do we move to a different area of the country where we can do different things? It's all up in the air. We don't know. So. I mean, for me, it's not a big stress, but it's something that is getting closer and closer as we look at it. And time goes by alarmingly quickly, too. Yeah. And you do have to give some thought to these things. And then what we're really talking about is different changes. And this article that you brought me a little while ago, I thought was interesting. It was, it's called A Streetcar City. And this is basically looking at the United States or one particular city uh, as what was going on this is actually in, in the 1900s washington dc yeah. it, you know it, it's very interesting because when our civilization began you had your your town your city your your you know and i'm saying more recent since the industrial age yeah this is talking about 1900 right so so people lived you lived very close to where you worked you walked right. to work right you you didn't have to worry about it uh you didn't need a car they didn't have cars in for a while well and, actually they what they say these american cities that were actually walking cities around 1900 right. mm -hmm. and the reason i like this is because we see that today we see more people walking people actually walk to the store carry groceries back uh they're shopping closer to home uh -huh. they're not going too far and and this is what used to happen in the 1900s. This is the way life was. There was very few products that you didn't get from your immediate area. In other words, you weren't getting bananas in New York at that time where you can get it now. Well, maybe not now, but yeah. you know well, what I mean. It was interesting because when we were in New York a number of years ago and did a lot of walking around. Yeah, that was fabulous. Uh, one thing we noticed was that there were little grocery stores kind of every few blocks. So, right. so that the, and some of the buildings that are being built now have stores and restaurants in the building. And uh, so they're kind of, kind of getting back to being localized. But uh, when the streetcars got introduced into mm -hmm. the economy, that's when suburbs started. Right. And, and we always think suburbs with the car. Right. But it wasn't. It the was freeway. a streetcar suburb. Right. And people could get, they could get out of town a little bit on the streetcar. Right. It was basically the richer people were actually, instead moving of moving out. in, they were moving out to the suburbs because they could, because they may have had transportation. Maybe the, the streetcars were there, but they also, the richer people probably had the new cars, the new wagons, that those types of things yeah. that were going up. But also it's interesting because today the millennials are not big on driving. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't even have their licenses. Right. So and and there's a lot of gentrica gentrification going on back into the cities mm -hmm. and back into and people and building 
reasonably priced uh, apartment complexes for the millennials. And they, they also can't buy a house or don't want to buy a house, but they also have a lot of debt from college and, yeah. and so on. And so it would be interesting to see if we, I think we may find more of a balance. From yeah, probably so. What really interests me in this is because I noticed when the first times that I came down to Florida when my parents were living here, uh, we would take the small highways, not because the freeways weren't around at that time. And to me, it was much more interesting going through these small towns, yeah. stopping in Tennessee and having something to eat was a mind-blowing thing because very seldom did we see the fried chicken that they had down there up in Michigan or in Canada. Right. Right. So the culture was there, and I always thinking these freeways are great for you know getting someplace fast, but not too much for adding quality of life. Yes. And and, uh, and today it, we we are we tend to be destination oriented. That's for sure. And we'll be right back after this destination, folks. <laughs> like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance Balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727 418 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
And welcome back. Uh, we're talking from this article, A Streetcar City, about around the 1900s that most of the cities that uh, in America were walking cities and most of the residents worked and shopped close to where they lived. But as the electric streetcar was built in the 1880s and 1890s and early 1900s, cities expanded and those uh, city dwellers moved to the new trolley suburbs, as we mentioned, and they started socializing in town. So they started going into to town as a destination, and neighborhoods began, uh, and the uh, the success in selling to the suburbs to the middle class changed the neighborhood life. At first, it was just the rich people, then the middle class came in, and then the shoppers started to find produce and meat from regional farms, fruits and vegetables from across the country, and a few products such as bananas from overseas. So this is where the food started distributing a lot different. And we started experiencing different food, which is kind of nice, but is it healthy? And this is something we're still trying to... Uh, yeah, not reference. eating locally. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But all of that had to do with the road system and the trucks and the, right. and the trains. And then once the trains got going, that's when people's, uh, the dispersal of families began. That you could, that you weren't live, staying in the town where you were born. You weren't marrying in the town and having your children, having your parents around, having your grandparents around. And, right. And it, and it really changed the whole dynamic of the family. That's right. Yeah. And so the American family changed right at that time, and it continued to change yeah. because of this food system that we kind of invented at that time. And today, we see the value of local food because now we're stuck indoors and we can only go a certain area. And when the food's not there, and mm -hmm. it's funny that it didn't really start with food for us. It started with toilet paper and uh, and uh, paper goods, and we still are short on the paper goods. Yeah, are they all made in China? I, mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's I've a good been question. trying to figure that out. But uh, uh, traffic and commuting, and uh, these days it's so nice to drive down to St. Petersburg because the traffic <laughs> sure is, is. is yeah. quite a bit lighter than it generally is, and. Uh, but of interest to me is things like, I keep seeing articles about animals wandering into town. Right. And um, here it's the sea turtles, which are generally a world war going on every year because they can't, uh, they can't get onto the beaches with so many people. Uh, their nesting is disturbed and so on. But So I think we're going to have a huge bumper crop of sea turtles this year because of the ability to nest unmolested on our beaches. And, Correct. And I think that, and that's true all over Florida. I've been looking at articles. There's this one that happens to be regarding the Broward County over Fort Lauderdale area beaches. But. So now all of a sudden the, the turtles are uh, really uh, booming, I guess. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there's no people on the beaches. So Those, uh, things have changed a lot. And I think this really... Uh, impacts our health. I've often said so. And so the health of the turtles might be going up where our health may be going down because of this. Or, is, or are people paying more attention to what they're eating because they're home? Certainly we've changed our habits. We don't go out anymore. Uh, we do go out just to get out of the house and take a little <laughs> ride now and then. But we're cooking a lot more. You know, the two or three times that we used to go out, which doesn't seem like a lot, but boy, you really notice the impact because now we're discovering new foods that you know, we have a couple different places where we go see sushi, we go, maybe this place has great fried foods, and, you know, so we always have our little favorite haunts to go to for specialty foods that we really like, and now we're discovering, well, we can actually make these at home, and we probably make them at home better. It's probably going to be healthier because of that, mm -hmm. but the going out is still a big pull. Yeah, well, it's just getting out of the house, having a routine, and seeing our, you know, you make friends with the servers and the bartender, and you know, it's just like going going to see friends. Right. It's a nice social event. You talk to people in the restaurant, whatever. They, uh, what, one of the things that struck me particularly was a photo that I saw of New Delhi, India. Mm -hmm. And New De the, a picture of New Delhi, India from, from uh, November of 2019, where it was completely engrossed and encased in smog. And today, it's crystal clear. The sky is blue. There was an eagle flying over the city. Yeah. And it's, it's staggering. Now, that's just a few months of time without the traffic. Right. And that's, that really brought home to me how much pollution and, uh, and detrimental uh, impact on the environment we have just with all the cars and now I know 
there's a lot of studies about uh, climate change and so on, and, and that, you know, the cars are not necessarily uh, responsible for a lot of these things. But well, it was always carbon monoxide back in the 70s that we were worried about, never carbon dioxide. I don't know when that switch took place, but pollution is still bad, and we all agree on that. Yeah. There's a guy here that his name is Douglas uh, Tal Talmy. Uh, and about 20 years ago, he started uh, this kick on wilding. And this is a great thing. Of course, I've always been the one who wants our yard naturally. You like that, too, because if plant some, we plant something and it lives, great. If it doesn't, eh, we're not that upset about it. Probably shouldn't have planted it. It's yeah, kind of way right we look now at we it. don't have that issue because everything's really balanced. In the yeah, yard. it looks really nice. But this fellow is... Uh, he wants to unleash the wild on your backyard, but not just on the ba on the on the uh, backyard, also on all these little parks that we have all around. And you know, they all look immaculate. They're all groomed, yeah. and this is not a natural way, naturally. Uh, and the natural way, a lot of people really don't know that if you just let that place go. A lot of wild stuff grows in there, and this guy did the same thing. He, he, he was looking in his backyard, and he wanted to let it grow naturally, so he let it go for a long time, and then he noticed there was a lot of invasive species in there. Uh -huh. So he wanted to get the invasive species out there, and when that happened, then the natural local fauna kind of took over, and he found it really pleasant and really nice, uh, and it, it looked good. It didn't look like these, these immaculate yards that everybody has. Show the picture of you. Yeah, yeah this is what a natural backyard could look like. Well, of course, he has 20 acres. Yeah, well, naturally. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. You know, he doesn't so. want that, for sure. Right. <laughs> All right. But I do notice, even in our yard, and uh, butterflies are flying around now, mm -hmm. and it's been a while since I've seen the butterflies mm -hmm. on the flowering plants. Yeah. And the, we have a lot more birds this year yeah. than we did for years. Yeah. And uh, hair, cardinals and... and that's Woodpeckers. What, yeah, and that's one of the things he mentioned. He spent, he mentions that he didn't have a lot of birds and a lot of natural wildlife going in there until the bugs and the caterpillars and everything like that started coming on the native plants. Apparently, the caterpillars and the worms and everything really didn't like these invasive species. Uh -huh. But when he took the invasive species out, then the caterpillars came, and when the caterpillars came, the birds came. Uh -huh. So you need foods for birds. And... Uh, it's pretty fascinating that you can do this with everything. I mean, the freeways with the, the burn in the center, we could make that more wild. In fact, I always thought we need to have those freeways a little higher so the, uh, the animals and everything can go underneath and not be uh, smashed by the cars. I did know? see a very disturbing video, a number of videos of, of very large alligators climbing fences. Yeah, yeah, you showed me that was kind of a staggering Well, concept. we didn't know it could do that. No. <laughs> yeah, but they're lizards, and, so they can and, climb anywhere. Well, but they never had to do that. Right. Now that there are fences along, you know, things like uh, the, the Alligator Alley across the bottom of yeah. the state of Florida from uh, southeast Florida to Naples, Fort Myers, yeah. over to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. You got a lot of fencing. We'll be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Number here is 877-927-6648 if you'd like to join the conversation. Researchers are exploring a connection between a species of gut bacteria and the severity of COVID-19. Uh, if you search the medical literature, you'll probably find links between gut health and any illness you can imagine. And this kind of started with uh, Hippocrates. Uh, all diseases begin in the gut, he said. And poor gut health has been linked to a broad range of diseases and health conditions from depression to diabetes and cancer, obesity, autism, autoimmune disease. And since we're talking about stress and adding more hours to your workday at home, uh, not the kind of uh, relaxed atmosphere we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. And we know that, and with me, this has been a lifetime thing going on with my gut. I've always had problems with my gut, and only when I stopped eating the wheat and the, uh, the grains and um, not so many nuts, my health has improved a lot. And who knew that the connection was there because this was some of the foods that our government and these food companies were promoting as we need something essential for us. Yeah, well, the, the food pyramid had the, um, the right. grains as the basis for the for exactly. your good diet. And, yeah. And uh, you have talked on other shows about the, the big companies, the cereal companies, and how they created cereal. And yeah, and that's a horror story in itself with Kellogg, and he was kind of a maniac too. But <laughs> uh, it's very important to understand that the gut is where everything takes place as far as food is concerned, and yeah. food is the thing that makes us healthy. So it's important to notice whether you're constipated or you're bloating or you have diarrhea. This is your bo body signaling the you that there's a problem and the problem is the food. If you take your dog or cat to the veterinarian, the first question, what did you feed them? Mm -hmm. When we go to the doctor, not so much. Yeah, What's, right, they don't ask you what you eat. No. Never. They, at the, these days they ask you to give a list of all the medications you're on and then they say, oh, and make sure you put down your vitamins because that's all medications. Right. And but food isn't. But they don't ask you what you eat. <laughs> no, they don't. So they, uh, 
Yeah, it's it's completely screwed up. So everybody gets a little constipated then. We always have, you know, somebody, times you have the run, you feel bloated, especially after a large meal or if you're drinking a little alcohol with it or maybe you had too much dessert. Whatever the reason is, these things are a sign of an unhealth, unhealthy gut. And this is something that you need to straighten out. And one um, of the things that they mention here is that being overweight and obese, Obese is not a natural right, condition. Right. Uh, having food tolerances, intolerances, and allergies is not normal. Being constipated and bloating and having diarrhea is not normal. Having depression and anxiety is not normal. Having skin problems are, are not normal. And having autoimmune disease. Yeah. So, I, I think the point is here that there's, there's physical manifestations and then there's emotional and mental manifestations. And uh, what we have to remember is that the gut is where all of the absorption of the nutrients for the food mm -hmm. goes into your system. Yeah, it's like when you're a teenager and all of a sudden the pimples start popping out at 13 and you wonder, well, the, this is just <laughs> hormones. No, it's the hormones that are reacting with what you're eating. And you stop eating the grains and things like that, then those acnes usually go away for most people. And that's interesting because a lot of people say, well, it's the chocolate and, you know, it's the fat, but, but it, it's actually the, the grains that, that when you stop eating the grains, a lot of people get a clearing of the skin. That's right. So and what really causes unhealthy gut? Well, the number one thing here they mention is stress. Stress can directly induce leaky gut. And stress can take many forms, as we all know. Bad, bad finances, you have uh, marital strife, you have, you're unemployed, you get too much exercise, you have not enough exercise, lack of sleep. This sounds like COVID quarantine. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? And poor sleep has, is another indication. If you're not sleeping, it could be that you're not digesting the food, or maybe you ate too late and the food is digesting while you're trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do both. And, and if you don't go to bed at a reasonable hour, or get, you have to kind of figure out what's your ideal number of hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. How, what do you feel the best? Right. And yeah. it's usually between seven and eight or nine. Or six, to, six yeah. to eight, maybe. Some, it just depends on the person. Now, some mm -hmm. people thrive on less sleep. Right. Some people need eight hours. They feel they need eight hours. And, you know, but sleeping too much is a sign of depression and, uh, and unhealthy things. Yeah. And if you sleep very long hours, then it also interferes with your... Uh, ability to get the right foods yeah. and, and to digest it. And now the next one here, inadequate dirt exposure. Now this <laughs> is what you don't think of usually. Uh, too sterile an environment causes too sterile a gut. We are, we are made to spend time in nature, hands, feet getting dirty, exposed directly to the natural soil, teeming with trillions of bacteria. We're meant to eat produce directly from the ground, and nature didn't intend us to always wash it. So we've got things completely backwards. Playing in the dirt. Sterilize when I was, the vegetables. You know. Yeah, exactly. When you want some of that humic and uh, fulvic acid in there, yeah. that's where it comes from. But uh, today, do we want to eat the dirt that's out there? Of course, probably not. If we're on a farm into that nice uh, uh, pasture that that guy with the 20 acres mm -hmm. had, then you're talking. But well, you talk a lot about when you were a kid and you would be digging around in the dirt and, and all the kids. And there's articles out there about the fact that they, you pick up very important micronutrients and, yeah. and immunities. But we only didn't do it just as kids. I remember then my dad digging for worms, so we'd go, go fishing. My dad and, always, and I went hiking and looking for snakes and rumbling through things. My mother would be doing gardening. gardening, exactly. They'd be out there messing with the flowers or the little garden that they had. They got dirty too, it wasn't just yeah, us, us true, children. True. But as kids, you know, nobody, I don't think, today the kids aren't going outside and they're sitting at their computers mm -hmm. or the, the babysitter internet, you yep. know, and, and so they're not even getting the little bit as children. Right. And a lot of schools have eliminated recess of yeah. all things. And not enough exercise or too much. Uh, and as, as we were children uh, on Saturday morning, running out the screen door and mm -hmm. let it slam and not seeing our parents or the house until... Supper time. It's got to be dark. Lots of exercise involved in there. We didn't call it exercise. Mm -hmm. We called it fun and being out with our buddies. Mm -hmm. So uh, the world is upside down. The other thing is uh, too many antibiotics naturally. That is something that um, 
you know, is if you take antibiotics on a regular basis, uh, you, you've got to change your lifestyle. Right. And then right. what are the worst foods for the gut? And the first thing that pops is refined carbs. A lot of the things that we see people getting now uh, because they're kind of panicking, so lots of bags of chips and popcorn going out the door. It's uh, not a lot of really good food, I see. But have time me, to snack. Yeah, and, you know, gluten... Uh, was a major thing. I don't know if it was gluten a problem for me, but certainly when I took the cereals out of my life, everything kind of changed. So we've only got a few minutes left in the next uh, after the next break, but we want to go over a few things that uh, are the best things for your gut. So let's go over that. And meanwhile, like everybody remind you to please pick up the primal edge because the folic and humic acids that's in the dirt is in here. It's going to make you healthy, folks. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. On Thursday, April 30th, I'll be holding an all-day online seminar where I'll teach you the essentials of my trading methodology, Timing the Trade. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with a lunch break from noon to one, I'll be covering quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and much more, all while the market is open in real time. When you sign up, I'll mail you a physical copy of my best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. You'll also receive a free month of my daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, $169 value. This six-hour online seminar will be archived if you can't attend the entire day live. My Timing the Trade webinar is taking place Thursday, April 30th, so don't wait to sign up. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has developed a daily programming lineup for traders by traders. We start every trading day live at 8.30 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien hosting the Morning Market Kickoff as he starts the day off by breaking down everything you need to know about what's going on for the trading day ahead. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento takes your calls and questions live on the air for the opening bell as he hosts Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Trading Hour. At 11 a.m., it's Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey from TD Ameritrade. Trade Network with Fast Market, Basil Chapman at noon with the Tiger Technicians Hour, Steve Rhodes hosts the Trader's Edge at 1 p.m., Dave White with the Power Trading Hour at 2 p.m., and Tom O'Brien closes out the day for the final hour of trading live from 3 till 4. Don't miss a second of our daily programming lineup. Tune in to Tiger TV every trading day live at TFNN.com. Educating investors. So we have a few minutes left to talk about the best food for gut, uh, gut health, uh, fermentable fiber. Now this is fiber that you can ferment naturally, and I, the first thing I always think of would be uh, like cabbage and things like that. Okay. They also mention here asparagus and carrots and or uh, okay. artichokes and onions and things like that. These uh, are, and when you ferment plants, they keep for a long time, and this is why our ancestors fermented them because during the winter you're, they're not out there so you have to keep them somewhere 
and fermenting them is a good way to do it. They mention things like chocolate and berries, but the biggest thing, it's a course, high, It's a high cacao, dark chocolate. Yeah, the dark chocolate, yeah. Uh -huh. Skin, bones, and broth. Uh, they mention meat down here, and they also mention pistachios and things like that. These uh, resistant starch, if you know what resistant starch is, this is starch that's been cooked a couple of different times. So if you take a twice-baked potato, it's much healthier than just a potato by itself because by doing the, the uh, double cooking, you're taking more and more of these toxins out. Remember, plants really don't like to be eaten. They have toxins in there. Right. So we need to cook them. We need to ferment them. We need to sour them. Uh, but yeah, everybody probably has a favorite type of food that you think of when you're not feeling well. I remember uh, just e even Werner's ginger ale up north in Canada. If I had a stomach that wasn't feeling, my mother would give me Werner's and might even heat it up or make it with tea too. So really? yeah, yeah, it's a cool thing. So and you haven't had Werner's yet. You really yeah, Werner's is, is, is a pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think very gingery. Yeah, very gingery. <laughs> but these are you know, some, some of the favorite foods that we keep around. And uh, you pistachios. and I don't. Pistachios. Pistachios, we like those for sure. <laughs> but the thing is, don't eat too many of them. Right. Uh, the main thing, meat here is very easy to digest. Uh, source of B vitamins. Yep. And uh, nutrient-dense, safe food for even damaged guts, it says. And you then they to, say you have to be careful about eating plant food if you have a lot of damage to your gut. Right. This is why things like uh, sushi, capaccio, and all these different types of foods really digest real easily. Well, that's our show today, and uh, thanks for sticking around, and we will be back next week. Uh, and uh, be safe out there, folks. Be well. Bye. -bye.